So I finally got a release date for my film Melanie's Grave. It'll be out on September the 27th, initially on Amazon Prime and Vimeo, Google Play and iTunes, and then expanding into other platforms further into the release. So for this video, I wanted to talk about my favorite shots in the film. I was gonna do my favorite scene, but quite frankly, I couldn't really pick a one. So I thought I'd just talk about some of my favorite shots instead. Now, to kick off with, we have a one-shot scene where Mel discovers that there's something amiss as she approaches the body in the woods. She doesn't know what to do here, so she's kind of wandering back and forwards uh, the way she came and looking about and then kind of returns to the spot where she initially was. Now, my DP wanted me to cut into this shot with a closer shot of Mel where she's furthest away from the camera, but I always wanted to keep this as a one -er. This was shot on a small jib that we had, uh, and it's a smooth rise up to her, and then the camera stays static as she walks away and then comes back to the camera. Now, I deliberately didn't shoot any coverage for this scene because I knew this shot was gonna work like the way it does, and I wanted to have it this way to give a sense of like Mel's feelings at this particular point. Like she feels detached and out of control of the events and is beginning to panic at this particular point. Now that distance that we see helps give the audience that sense of detachment and being out of control because obviously like, we kind of naturally want to follow her but we don't. This shot is my favorite of all the shots that we did. I actually stole it from Pan's Labyrinth where the director uses this technique quite a few times. Now, most people won't be able to tell how it's actually done, but I'm sure you can have a guess. Now, it's not some fancy editing that we've done. This was all in camera with one tree, one actress and no doubles. Now, I won't spoil it if you don't know how it was done, but I just absolutely love this shot so much. It's very simple, but it's really effective from a visual point of view. Now this shot is a variation on the camera tracking across the tree shot you've just seen, but it involves two actors this, this time. Now part of the story is about Mel's fractured mind and remembering herself and her emotional trauma when she was younger. So we often see that manifesting as the younger self in some of the scenes. Now in these two shots, all we did was have Rachel, who plays the older version of Mel, walk behind a tree where Lucy, who plays the younger version of Mel, it was hidden. Now one stops walking and talking behind the tree and the other starts walking and talking and emerges from, be from behind the tree. In the second shot, the timing is a little off when Rachel emerges. Um, I'd like to have had her emerge a fraction quicker, but this was like the best take that we ended up having. But I mean, it, it still works okay. So here we've got a wide shot of Mel and Rob and the camera pans with Mel as she goes into the kitchen area to put something in the bin. Now this establishes where she is before we see the shot that I wanted to show you. Okay, so this is like a closer shot of Mel, which then develops into an over the shoulder wide of Rob sitting kind of in the background on the chair, panning with Mel as she steps out from behind the wall. So if you see that small area of bench to the right, that was where the camera operator was sitting. He had to sit on this tiny little area just in, in order to get that shot. Now, I love these kind of shots which develop from one thing into another. And I tried to get as many of these into the film as possible because I didn't, want to just have some generic wide close mid shots so i always try to get some interesting shots into every scene of the film whether it was something like this or an unusual camera angle of some sort now this shot isn't going to be something that's going to wow you but at the time of shooting i'd never used a crane in any of the kind of short films that i'd done previously so i was quite excited to use it now we only ever used it in these woodland sequences and we used it as sparingly as possible but the fact that we had one with no budget just really got my juices flowing so i basically told her to struggle with trying to get rob to move and if she fell over just to carry on and uh, it would obviously add a lot of authenticity to the scene so i shot this from a few different angles and i kept the takes going for as long as rachel could exert herself because this was genuinely her struggling to move James who plays Rob but I also told him not to help her in any way. Some of the camera moves are also improvised like this moving up and down. I just said to the camera guy just follow Mel but we'll kind of try and move between the pair when it became appropriate. 
So during the edit, I, I could have had this a lot shorter, but I wanted the audience to kind of feel the struggle right at this particular point. So I made it as long as I could, whilst also you know trying not to kind of bore the audience too much so they wouldn't lose interest. So during production, there were always some happy accidents and there were a few in Melanie's grave. This shot of Mel tidying her hair in the mirror came about because of a continuity error with her hair in the two kind of scenes either side of this. So in the scene immediately before, Rachel's hair is all messed up and hanging out because she's been kind of roughed up a little bit by Rob. But in the shot immediately after that, her hair is really tidy and tied back. So when we did some pickup shots, I had to kind of devise a little shot to kind of go in the middle of those two shots that we already had. So I had to go to this particular mirror and just tie her hair back and tidy her hair up. Um, and I was standing pretty much where the camera is now and I saw one of the crew members just walking out of the room and I kind of instantly saw the shot in my head. I just love the fact that you see her in the mirror and disappear out of the shot just to emerge in the other half of the frame when she leaves the room. Well, I, I thought it looked cool anyway. But this scene in the woods, I said to Rachel, when you come through the branches, have a little fall down and then get back up, which obviously she does. Then we cut away to Susan, uh, who's playing Zoe. And then when we come back to Rachel in the reverse, she didn't see this little kind of natural trench that was in the woods and it was disguised by all the vegetation. So she fell into it. But luckily, um, she didn't stop um, acting and she just carried on which and she scrambled up and out and ran off and it looks great in the film and it adds to the struggle of her being kind of lost in the woods but when we cut to the other angle I had to get her to fall down on purpose in the same place so we could kind of match cut that in the edit so this little accident brought that little added touch to that little particular moment in that particular scene it makes it just feel all that more natural one final complete accident was uh, the inclusion of this Robin in this particular shot. Now, in fact, this wasn't meant to be a shot in the film at all. What we were doing was we were recording some ambient sound and decided to roll a camera at the same time just for reference. But because we were being so quiet and so still, the bird just landed perfectly on this branch right in front of the camera where we were focused. So I decided to use it in the film. And it also serves as a transition to the next scene as it kind of as it flies away, I added the sound effects of like this car door opening as if the noise had scared the bird off. And then we cut to the scene in the car. So that was like a really kind of happy accident that helped in the edit. So that was a taster of some of my favorite shots in the films, which is out on September 27th and is available on Amazon and Vimeo and will extend into other platforms as and when. So once again, thanks for watching.